All right, Cascade Moon. <laughs> That's what we got tonight, Bourbon Puss. Cascade Moon. That gummit. Oh, had the glasses ready. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So, Cascade Moon, which is uh, George Dickel, Denise Austin, and I have three expressions for you tonight of Cascade Moon. So, there's actually been four. The one I passed on was the, uh, uh, oh, let's just go over what they are. So, and none of these have been open, so we'll have three fresh crackings. We got the new uh, decanter in last week, which is the overflow, overflow decanter. Made some progress on that. But anyways, um, gosh, when was this released? It's either 2021 or 2022. But anyways, uh, Denise Austin, master distiller at uh, George Dickel Cascade Moon. Uh, this is kind of her own line or expression, if you will. Um, this is edition number one, uh, Mellow as Moonlight. It is 84 proof. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more and let you take a look at that. That's the first release of Cascade Moon. Um, yeah, that's all it really says about it. And then followed up with that was the second release, um, Cascade Moon, 150 years of crafting Tennessee whiskey, George A. Dickel, Mellow's Moonlight. This is 90 proof. Um, this release from Cascade Moon honors the heritage of the George Dickel brand, one marked by forward thinkers. We celebrate 150 years of passion for making whiskey and look forward to the next 150 years did I say 2020? So this is a second release and this is 1870 to 2020? Maybe it did come out in 2020. Yeah, regardless, I've yet to open them. But uh, let's take a look at the release number two. Mellow was Moonlight. And then the latest release, which I literally picked up today. Um, now this one is interesting. Uh, Cascade Moon, aged 15 years, barrel proof, spirits distilled from grain, mellow as moonlight, barrel proof, but less than 80. So it actually comes in at 79.8% proof. So it's not 80 proof, so they could not call it whiskey, which is what they say here on the side. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a release number like the other ones did. And there was one before this, which was like 300 something bucks, a 13 year old rye. And me not being a rye guy, I passed on those and been wanting to do these. And now that we've got three of their expressions, we'll see, uh, see they're, all these are at least a hundred bucks. I paid 125 for this one today. Uh, with this elegant spirit, was distilled from mash of corn, rye, and malt, placed in new charred American oak barrels to age in our single story warehouses. As a result of the curious conditions experienced by these barrels during the aging process, their proof dropped below the minimum standard to be called a whiskey. The result is a complex and sophisticated spirit with a light and easy drinking character without being watered down. So no water, down, no water added, less than 80 proof so it could not be called a whiskey uh but this is it is aged 15 years it is barrel proof even though it's a low proof all right so let's get to get to taste it uh, don't put that thing out here there you go. all right so the first one do the plastic jobs on all these got the most latest release which I'm really interested to see about this I'm hoping it was worth it but I have my doubts being such a low proof I mean 
125 bucks for something that's not even 80 proof it better be good like I said I have my doubts come on there we go gee whiz alright so let's pour them all into the glass we'll pour each into the infinity bottle Oh, America! All right, yeah, this is much better. This new decanter is much better than that piece of shit glow decanter that we're getting rid of. All right, there's release number one of Cascade Moon. Uh, Release number two. And then finally the one we picked up today. I mean, I like the bottles on these. Kind of colorful. obviously the richest on this the second one no doubt about that um, which it was ow damn it how long was this age does it say it doesn't say this one was 15 years but it's the low proof one all right let's go into the nosing and tasting on these I mean, none of these are high proof anyways. Uh, this one here, I believe is the 84, 84 proof. Yeah, 84 and then 90 and then the sub 80. But it, I don't know, it comes off like toasted marshmallow. I'm not sure about the nose on that. It's, it's light toasted marshmallow. I mean, it says mellow as moonlight. It knows it's mellow. Cheers, bourbon cluster. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not digging that. It's like. What is that? It's like a soggy toasted marshmallow now. Like, mm. going for a second sip. All right, a little better on the second sip. Um, yeah. Would not pay whatever I paid. I know. I know it was hundred plus. That's a pass for for that amount of money. Definitely a pass at a at a hundred bucks for sure. Um, all right, let's go into the second one. All right. So this is. Much more complex on the nose, and obviously darker color. It is richer, more like um, dark fruit and dark berry, like plum and blackberry. And we do get some vanilla and caramel on that too, but it comes off as dark fruit and dark berry. Maybe some grape. Yeah, some great plum. 
blackberry, maybe some black cherry. Cheers, Bourbon Quest. That's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, you get that black fruit and black um, black fruit and blackberry on that um, 90 proof I mean drinks easy the nose is nice the palate's nice that's pretty good um, I'm not it's where value gets into play on this because I know again sub hundred bucks or I mean a hundred plus um, might have to give it a thumb sideways on that like I want to say it's a buy but I can just think of so many other things for a hundred plus dollars or less that would be better than that although this is good I just don't know about about the price point on these. This one's definitely a pass. I don't think that's even going to change with airtime or whatever based upon the cost. And I mean, it might change a little bit. Hopefully, it gets a little better. But that's definitely a pass. This is actually really good. I enjoy that one. All right, let's cleanse the palette and get to the latest one. I think that these are still pretty much available. Um, obviously, this one is. It just came out. I don't think... I never saw any of these fly off the shelf. Um, even when they first came out, I think mainly because of their price point. Um, they hung around so I would imagine there's some still available on all these I'd pass on number one. I think number two Is good. And it's not dickle. I don't get I don't get that um, That Flintstone bottom in really in either of these but all right I'm interested to see about this latest one at 79.8 proof It, yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously, it's very light on the nose. Um, I wanted to compare the noses to number one to this one. The nose is definitely better on this one. But, it's really, really light and mellow. Granted, that's what it says on the bottom. Mellow is moonlight. But you know, this one really does come off of that. It does come off as like, like, this is gonna sound corny or whatever, but it does come off as like, dew on freshly cut grass after moonlight, if that makes any damn sense. All right, cheers. Let's see. That's surprisingly good. I mean, there is no burn, obviously, at less than 80 proof. I mean, which could make this dangerous because this is totally crushable. I mean, yeah, velvety, smooth. The nose is nice. I mean, not like superb, but man, the palate. It's like, yeah, toasted, caramel, light chocolate. There's no Flintstone in this at all. That is it's surprisingly good I mean and I think a lot of it has to do with it being 
a low proof, I mean, less than 80% proof, but barrel proof, no water to add it, it does give you a ton of flavor. I mean, surprising. Now, 125 bucks? Yeah, I don't know. Although, I will say, the last two or three batches of uh, Bardstown Discovery Series, which are 130 bucks, have been disappointing. I, this was this is not disappointing. This is actually surprising. It's hard to say that something under eight, uh, even 80 proof, but let alone under 80 proof, hell, under 90 proof, would be worth 125 bucks. But I mean, well, also it depends on your discretionary income, what you're willing to spend on whiskey or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a great value by any means, but. I'm, me personally, I'm not disappointed that I bought this. I thought I was going to be. I really did. But on the initial, this is like, mm, that's really good. And it's so, I mean, there's no hug, there's no burn, but the flavor is really good. And obviously, drinks velvety smooth, um, totally crushable. Obviously, at its proof point, um, I think a fantastic July whiskey. We're filming this in July, in the hot summer heat when you typically do want lower proof stuff, or at least I do. Although I will say, for the most part, I am a proof fan, and I, and I still drink high proof stuff even in hot weather. But you know, but also like lower proof stuff during the hot uh, hot months which typically yeah can make more leave it than take it in the winter months but this is again take it for what it's worth um uh, you know i'm not disappointed that i bought this at all Do, is it worth 125 bucks that's hard to save for the proof point that it's it that it is but if you take that out of consideration or whatever for the experience the flavor the enjoyment the crushability of that i think um i think it's good probably not 125 dollars good but now the question is would i buy these again I would say probably not. Am I disappointed that I bought them? No, for the experience. But is it an experience at that price point that I'd want to repeat? No, it's not a bottle I would buy again. But definitely, this is a pass. The first edition, not good. These two are really, really good um, and are different. And I'm glad that they're in my collection. Um, I was hoping that I would not like any of these, which would give me the excuse and liability to not purchase the next Cascade Moon. But based upon these two, and depending on what it is um, and whatever, this is one I contemplated on whether I even wanted to buy with it being under 80 proof. I'm, I'm glad that I did. Of course, now granted, I'm not your average consumer because I do thanks for the channel and so forth, but um, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by this latest edition of Cascade, Cascade Moon. So, hey, hats off to these, Austin. Uh, I'd like to see the price come down from what they are, but um, but I like what you're doing. Um, and, you know, there's always about stretching the envelope. And, you know, a lot of times we're stretching the envelope, which you think about, you know, in the last month of the latest news of um, Jack Daniels Coy Hill stretching that envelope towards, you know, 155.1 or 3 proof or whatever it was, 155 point something proof. But interesting to stretch the envelope the other way to go below 80 proof. I don't know if that, tell me, hey, I'd be interested um, on what would be a bourbon or what would be a whiskey 
if it were 80 proof. Has that been done before? A, a sub 80 proof, if it was 80 proof, if it was 80 proof, this would be a, a whiskey. But since it's not, it cannot be called a whiskey. But I'm interested to know just if that's ever been done before. A sub 80 proof, everything else being it would qualify as an 80 whiskey. You know what I'm saying. Whether it be 79, 78, 75, whatever the case is. I, I think that's, uh, I think that number one is ballsy to do. Uh, but then again, due to the circumstances, what were your other choices? I guess you could have uh, used it in a blend. Uh, but hey, it's good. Well, that's enough talking about that. This is definitely a pass. These two are good. Hopefully, maybe the prices will come down um, on never what Denise does forward with uh, this continuing line of uh, Cascade Moon. Like I said, the only one of the Cascade Moons that I don't have, haven't purchased. Um, and also, if you have the Cascade Moon Rye, let me know. Uh, I just, for 300 bucks, uh, definitely wasn't doing that one. Especially with it being a rye, that's not my typical jam. Um, but I'm willing to take a take a risk on these. Two of the, two of the three paid off, so, um, you know, depending on what the next one is, I'd be at least willing to give it a shot. Have I have, had I not liked any of these three, unless there was a rare exception, I wouldn't have gave, given whatever their next version of this a shot. But that's not the case. These are good. All right, I'm rambling. Time to go uh, enjoy maybe a cigar and whatever else. Another glass of whiskey and listen. We've got more content coming out if you haven't done so make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, we're we're getting close we've got uh hopefully a good announcement coming up in the next a week or two uh, so i'll be looking to share more from that it's going to be a busy week this week so maybe a little bit light on the videos but but just so you never miss one hit that uh and only after you subscribe ring that bell for notifications that way you don't miss a damn thing here on bourbon quest Feel free to leave a comment um, and uh, smash that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithms. And we're going to wrap this stuff up and say goodnight. And as always, my wish for you is that all your bourbon quest dreams come true. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a wrap, yo. I was surprised. It was good, bro.